Before this current situation, I'd often find myself jumping in the car and driving to wherever I was gonna go riding, be it a trail center, downhill, bike park, etc. But after this lockdown period, it's really made me appreciate the riding that's actually on my doorstep. I found epic places I've never been, trails I've never ridden, and also found out that my e-bike was the ultimate tool for exploration. So today, I'll be showing you how you can make your own epic loop too. Kicking things off, it all depends on where you live. If you live in a town or a city, you might have to drive to your location to start your loop. But just remember, if you are driving, to park properly. You've got your e-bike in the car, so riding that first quarter of a mile to your loop isn't gonna matter. It's really worth doing because it won't upset the locals. If you're looking to kick things off closer to home, then your local woodland is a great place to start. Now, access is gonna vary across these places all over the world, so just check your actual legal to ride there before you go exploring. But exploring is something you're gonna to have to do in these spots. There will be apps that will work in these woods showing the trails that are already built, but there'll be plenty of tracks that are gonna be offline. So get out there and explore. There is loads of hidden gems in your local woods. So a map is a great way of exploring all those new trails around you. It's gonna have that area in detail, especially in those ordnance survey maps. I mean, you can look at that area and discover all the byways, bridleways that you are allowed to ride. It's also gonna show you where are footpaths, so you don't wanna be riding on those. The great thing about a paper map is that it's a fail-safe way of discovering the trails. It's gonna be there all times, no matter the weather, whether you've got a flat battery or maybe the app crashes on your phone, it's just that fail-safe option. But some of those amazing trails aren't gonna be on a map. One of my favorite ways of discovering those golden nuggets that are in the hills is heading to the local bike shop and speaking to the owner, speaking to people that drop in. If they're into mountain biking, you can definitely work up a chat with them and discover all those trails. Or maybe even go on a group ride. Those group rides happen all over the world. So you meet up at the bike shop, talk a bit about bikes, maybe have a drink of tea and go discover all those trails that are around your local area. Then after, maybe go for a beer and start chatting. It is really social. And talking of social, social media is a really good one too. Have a look on social media, follow those Facebook pages of all the local groups that are riding around you. That way you're gonna go up, get out on those rides and discover the trails too. But if you're not into the exploration side of things and you want all your riding on a plate, then maybe a trail center is for you. You've got those trails that are way marked, they're gonna be surface, they're gonna have full, you know, full of features on the way down. You're gonna have a simple climb to the top. It's a great way of going out there and just ride in sterilized trails that are just, you know, for everyone. But if you wanna get a bit of air underneath your wheels, then maybe head to your local bike park. These are gravity fed downhill runs that are gonna have jumps and things like that all the way down. They're a great way of getting out there and enjoying your local riding. If you're looking to ride from your door, then the easiest way to do this is via apps or going online. Apps such as Strava, Trail Forks or Commute are gonna have all those routes on there that people are already have ridden and logged onto that app. But I like to take it one step further and go to Google Satellite View and have a look at the intended area that I wanna ride. I take note of interesting features, big areas of woodland, high elevation, and things just, you know, that look exciting to ride. Then I go to them and do a little recce first then you'd be sure to know that the access is gonna be legal and the access is good as well. It's important to check out these spots before you go adding them into your loop because you can turn up at some places and not even get into them. Then there is linking the loop together safely. Now I did this via the Commute app. I've literally just pinpointed each area that I want to ride and then commute 
is going to work out the route between that point and the next, working it out the safest and the easiest way, preferably off-road, cutting out that time spent on the tarmac. Then all I've done is gone from commute and that's downloaded my route to my Garmin and then that route is going to be heads up all the way, it's going to be guiding my way around that loop. Needless to say, on a big ride like the one I've got planned today, I'm going to be bringing in along a rucksack. This has got all the essential items in there. It's also got a map in there, just as that fail-safe option. I've also got the Garmin mounted on my handlebars. So that's just going to give me a heads-up display of the route at all times. Also going to have that app open on my phone as well, just to give me another location to one of those fail. Also, it's about knowing the range that you're going to be doing on your ride. Now, I know this ride is about 25 miles long, which isn't going to be my biggest ride. And I've done way further than that with more elevation just on the same bike with the same setup and the same battery. So range is not gonna be a problem today. Time then to get this show on the road and go and ride this loop. Now this loop literally has it all from free ride to fire road, literally has every discipline along the way. Now the great thing about using commute to plan my route is that it's kept me off the tarmac as much as possible because I personally hate riding tarmac on my e-mountain bike. Now the type of routes we're gonna use, well that's gonna vary from national trust land, bridleways, byways, main roads and forest tracks. And the way you tackle these tracks is all going to vary. So I'm going to give you a few pointers along the way. Anyway, enough chat. Let's get right in. Now, one thing on a big ride a lot of people are worried about is battery range. Now, I like to try and stay in as low a power mode as I possibly can. I usually try and kick off with the actual bike turned off when I leave the house, just for the first few hundred meters, say, and then turn it on to eco, because then you'll realize how much assist eco actually gives you. It's quite easy to start those rides off in a higher power setting, then start running out of battery, then thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna run flat. Now the first stop on my loop, I didn't actually find myself. I headed to the local bike shop and the guys were talking in there about this spot. And I searched it out online, had a quick look on Google Maps and it looks absolutely amazing for a bit of cross country action. Got nice flat trails that run alongside the river with the odd technical bit on the side of the trail if you wanna spice things up. One thing to think about, this being so close to town means that you get a lot of other people enjoying the forest at the weekend. So just think about when you're riding this spot, you know, if, if you're gonna hit it on your loop, do it either first thing in the morning or last thing at night. That way you're gonna run into a lot less people also out and about in the woods. But if you do come across someone, just give them a wide berth, say hello and carry on nice and slowly. When I was looking for spots to ride in the local area, I came across this huge amount of woodland with amazing scenery, amazing lakes, bridleways, byways, and it looked absolutely amazing for mountain biking. Now, after a little bit of research, I actually found that the area was owned by the National Trust. Now, the National Trust in the UK is in charge of management uh, of places just like this local beauty spot here. Now, the National Trust actually actively encourage mountain biking in some of their forests but you need to be carrying on in the right way and riding the right trails. They often have land rangers out there keeping an eye on you. So you don't want to deviate from those tracks because you, know, you don't want to be giving E-Mountain Biking a bad name. 
But the great thing about riding a spot just like this on your loop is that it's often gonna be a tourist attraction too. I mean, you get ice creams, coffee shops, pubs, you name it. You might be even able to stick your bike on charge for those bigger rides. So riding on the road definitely can become a little bit tedious, I'm not gonna lie. But you still can have a bit of fun, just make the most of it. There's loads of little jumps, little things you can pop wheelies off, practice your track stands at the traffic lights. All makes all that road stuff a lot, lot easier. Now the track I'm riding right now is a byway. Now a byway is a great way of linking those spots together on your loop. They're also really good at avoiding those long stretches of road and staying off the dreaded tarmac and the busier roads. Now the type of users you're gonna get on a byway is gonna vary too. You're gonna get off-road vehicles, motocross bikes, Land Rovers, you're gonna get mountain bikers. So it's really important when you're out and about on these byways to keep your eyes open and your ears open too. Ears is a really good one, listening, you can hear those motocross bikes coming from a long way away because you're often riding at quite high speed. Now the type of byway and the maintenance that goes on is going to vary too. Some of the byways have ruts in them that are literally as deep as your handlebars where they've been eroded by 4x4s. But some of them are nice gravel or maybe even tarmac. As I just mentioned, they're a great way of staying off that main road. But as always, if you come across one of the users enjoying the byways, give them space and let them crack on with what they're enjoying. It's not just you on your byway. So this is a classic. I've stumbled upon these amazing jumps in a local bit of woodland. Now, the amount of time that actually goes into these jumps is something that you really need to respect. You can't just turn up at a spot like this and expect to ride, especially if you haven't done the work before. Now, a lot of these guys have put days, months of building, wheelbarrows, you name it, to create these amazing trails. So they really respect it as well. If you didn't go tagging it in social media or showing your mates or telling everyone where these amazing new jumps are, it isn't great for the builders. However, if you do intend to ride in a spot like this, it's worth going back at the weekends and there's usually going to be a crew of riders here digging and riding. So make friends with them, do your bit and earn your, earn your way of riding at this spot. If you're simply going to turn up, blow out the turns, put it all over social media, it's not going to do anyone any good. So this spot we're riding right now wasn't actually found on an app or a map. It was actually found on Google satellite view. 
I looked in and I thought, wow, that place looks absolutely epic. Big scenery, big drop-offs, and some crazy machinery to boot. And I thought that has got to be a spot to check out. But you need to think about where and when you're doing this type of riding on your loop. If you're finding something you might think, hmm, might be possible, might not, you might crash, then now isn't the time to be doing it. You need to come back with the right bike and the right kit and get ready to ride. Just in case you say break a wheel, you're not riding back 20 miles back to your house. It's a simple push back to your car and drive home. There we go, a rad 25 mile loop, literally from my front door to spots I've never even been to, let alone ridden. And I guarantee you, you've got some similar stuff close to your home too. Don't forget to get involved in the comments box down below uh, about what you thought about this video and the spots I rode. Let us know which one was your favorite spot that I rode today. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and make sure you find and give us a follow on social media too. Cheers guys.